Hi, I'm Roshan. I'm from year 10, and this is Millen from year 12. Um, and we go to Watford Boys, as you can see, and we've been partaking in the James Webb Telescope Project, which is in collaboration with IRIS and allows us to classify some objects in space. Uh, our job was to analyze the spectra and graphs um, to, um, uh, th there's a plot of magnetic flux density against wavelength, and we need to give our opinions on what uh, planetary objects these were, whether it was a forming star, a planetary nebulae, or um, yeah, whatever it was. And we used data from the previous Spitzer Space Telescope mission in August 2003. And um, we are identifying potential targets in the future for the James Webb uh, Space Telescope, which will be launched in uh, 2021. Uh, so this is just an example of an object we classified. Um, this graph over here shows off the energy released at different wavelengths. However, it's not too detailed, so we were given a high-resolution graph. Uh, not all of the objects had one, but this one did. microns, the, um, uh, it's extended to 37 microns, and this gave us much more um, scope to actually um, an, uh, classify this, and we ended up classifying it as a evolved star, and that's because, as you can see, at first up to about 15 microns, it decreases, from then on, the gradient starts increasing and then stabilizes, which shows that there's not much activity from the star now, and it's um, evolved. So back to the original graph, we can, if we, on uh, the website, we could also find out um, its redshift, so that is how far away it is from the Earth. Um, however, this one is unknown. Um, uh, we were also given a step-by-step -step, uh, classification guide um, in order to classify this star, uh, which turned out to be an ordinary star. So as you can see, it does not rise from left to right um, in the continuum, and there is no kink um, in the spectrum at 7 or 15 microns. So then, therefore, it was an ordinary star. OK, so I'll just take a moment to uh, give our reflections on the project. Um, so we've been meeting. Uh, Every week uh, since November, a uh, group of uh, Year 10 and Year 12 students uh, to actually classify and, and, and analyze these stars. And it's been really helpful in actually applying our physics knowledge outside of the classroom and actually know that the stars that were, the objects that we're classifying will be used in a future mission um, in a couple of years' time. So firstly, I'd like to thank uh, the, uh, you, the audience, for listening and my teachers, um, Dr. Shanti's in the audience somewhere and also the people at IRIS uh, for supplying us with the data, so thank you. What do you plan to do with the data? Uh, okay, so the phase three data, which is the unseen data set that each project was given, so our school was given a different set to um, their school, and the data, it's going to be reviewed by scientists later on, and it's going to be supplied to the James Webb Telescope to be used similarly to the Spitzer Telescope to identify the stars in greater detail because the James Webb Telescope has better instruments for analyzing the stars. Excellent. Well, I have a question for the group. What was the most challenging part about the project? I think um, the most challenging part was initially because um, we, we were um, actually supplied with a lot of data and we need to learn a lot of new concepts such as analysing the, the red shifts and um, identifying emission and absorption features which we hadn't necessarily learned in the classroom. So initially that was, there was that struggle but um, it evened out a bit and as we analysed more we got better. Excellent, so. excellent, really well done. Okay, well let's say congratulations to the two teams. Thank you very much.